Sarah Jakes, welcome to New Zealand. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. Now, I understand, like, when they announced that you were going to be part of the lineup, you know, they said, oh, Sarah Jakes is going to be here. And then they had to change all the program because you changed your name. You went from Sarah Jakes to Sarah Jakes Roberts, getting married at the end of last year. First of all, congratulations. Thank That's you wonderful. Thank you very much. <laughs> and, and married life treating you well? Uh, it's incredible. I'm so blessed he's here with me. And so we've been eating and enjoying all of Auckland. So what are your impressions of, of New Zealand? Then? Incredible food, uh, very gracious people. Everyone's been very kind and welcoming, and they like American accents everywhere we go. <laughs> Something different, I guess. <laughs> so in terms of your, your own background, I mean, growing up as the daughter of, of Bishop Jakes, Bishop T.D. Jakes, he's, he's famous around the world. Being a, a pastor's daughter is one thing, but being the, the daughter of such a famous pastor, there must have been a lot of pressure on you. Certainly, there was a lot of pressure, and to my parents' credit, they didn't have that pressure inside the home, but of course, when we were out in church or at our conferences, there was significant pressure to kind of make sure that we lived lives that didn't deviate from what he preached, but as we all know, we all have our own journey with Christ, and so it was a bit of a struggle internally trying to live up to those expectations, but also be real about where we were and growing. In terms of, I guess, that journey that you were on, um, can you tell us a little bit oh, about sorry. that? Um, Sarah, we're just going to get your hair off your microphone. That's it. That's better. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, sorry about that. So um, pick it up from there? Or? You can ask, ask yeah, pick it up from there. Thanks, sure. George. So in terms of that journey that you were on then, as, as perhaps particularly as a teenager, can you tell us a little bit about what that involved and where God fitted into that for you? Yes, yeah, certainly. I think there, like I said, a lot of pressure to fit in. I wasn't exactly, I guess, churchy, so I didn't, you know, necessarily feel like I was a part of our family. And so that need to be accepted and validated, I found myself trying to fit in with peers. And then that, you know, I, I got pregnant at the age of 13 and, and had my son at the age of 14. And so so what started off as a small insecurity really grew, grew, and grew. And from there, I found myself in a lot of toxic relationships and situations, just trying to come to terms with who I was and really fall in love with God again. So in, with that situation, with becoming pregnant at such a, a young age, how, how did your parents react? How did the church respond to this? Well, there, you know, no one dreams of their daughter having a child at the age of 14, so they were certainly disappointed, but they were very, uh, committed to being by my side and really standing with me and it was through that loyalty that ultimately I, I became curious about the God that I heard them preaching about every Sunday. If you can love me through this, how do you get that strength? And so uh, they were disappointed but ultimately love won. Do you think that journey that you were on as a younger person then, I mean, is, was that the turning point? Was that you actually finding who God was and how much He loved you? and yeah? what it actually meant to have a relationship with him because you went through that stuff? I think it was actually the opposite. I think for people like me who have found themselves who've made a mistake or have a scar or a past that isn't exactly beautiful that you end up thinking that you don't deserve God's love. And so it, although that wasn't the turning point for me, that journey really ultimately made me realize that you could live for the opinions of others or you could really try to rise above that and trust God's love. And so it was probably 10 years after I had my son that I really ultimately said, you know, this is who I am. It's not a beautiful past. It's not perfect. It's not a churchy one, but it is an authentic one. And I believe that in our authenticity, that that's where God is really able to maximize his strength and power. I mean, just that. Sorry, one more. Yeah, yeah. I'm just going to move this down, and it won't get you here at all. I'm sorry. Uh, it's all good. There we go. Mm -hmm. No, no, that's <laughs> Yeah, what was the question? No, sorry. Um, that authenticity, that, that openness of saying, well, hey, actually, I haven't got it all together. I struggle. Your openness and transparency about that has been an inspiration to so many people and has led to a fantastic ministry. It has, and I never anticipated that it would do that. I started a blog that I really didn't think anyone would see, and people kept saying, you're so authentic, you're so transparent. And I was like, I'm just me, you know? But I think that it goes to say that those of us who are in church or who are raised around church really are looking for someone to be authentic 
authentic about this walk with God. Everyone has this tendency to make it look so easy, but when we reveal our struggles, we give other people permission to walk with Him and still struggle so that He can really have access to all of who they are. Given that you have a ministry which has impacted so many lives and continues to do so even on the other side of the world from where you live, you know, you're here at Cloud Festival in New Zealand. Is there, on a personal level, is there a struggle with that for you, given that you kind of, now you're a name that people know and you're, you're somebody up on a the stage they might recognize. In terms of you and your own relationship with God, do you, do you find that hard in any way? I think that there's a temptation for that to be difficult, but I think it comes back to how did you get in this moment? And that was authenticity and transparency. So I really try to not live this life that isn't genuine to who I am. And it is tempting because everyone knows who you are and that makes you want to hide, you know? But the reality is that the reason why people have been drawn to me is because I'm honest and I'm authentic about who I am. And so I vowed when this platform began to emerge that I would be consistent with that. Just speak to parents of teenagers out there because there'll be people listening who say, look, well, look, I think I've done everything I can to raise my kids to know the truth, to be raised in a Christian household. What advice would you give them in terms of giving their children freedom, but also a framework of faith in order to find their own journey forward? Yeah, I think that as parents, you know, I have two children now that sometimes we are the closest to God that our children will ever see. And so I think that above all of the principles and structures, which of course children need, that if you can show them the love of God, that through their mistakes, through their insecurities, that love is still here. And this love still expects for you to be better. This love expects for you to forsake the things that held you back and really continue to press towards the mark. That the more that we're able to do that, that we're able to inspire them. I truly believe that my saving grace was that my parents planted seeds in me when I was very, very young. And for a while, dirt covered those seeds and it didn't really look like anything would take root and blossom, but ultimately, that a flower emerge from that. And so I say put it in them, pray, and do all you can from there. In terms of what you're going to be communicating here at the Cloud Festival when you're speaking later in the day, is there is there a message that's particularly on your heart or that you'd like people to, to take away from them at the end of today? Well, I like to set the atmosphere by being transparent about who I am because I believe it gives people permission to be transparent about where they are. But ultimately, I want to speak to the things that keep us from accessing God's love and that keep us from really believing higher and better for ourselves. And through that, it's my prayer that they will be inspired to really rise to the highest versions of themselves. Well, really looking forward to hearing you speak later on. Sarah Jakes, thanks so much for joining my us. My pleasure.